So, Doctor, our next speaker is going to be again Dr. Rajesh Fogla, and we don't even need to be uh, introduce him. He's such a famous personality and a national figure and an international one at that. And he's a director of the cornea services at Apollo Hospital Hyderabad. And he's going to tell us something very intricate and important, tips and tricks to un unroll the DMX scroll. On to you, Dr. Rajesh. Thank you, Dr. Chitra, for making me part of this uh, program. Uh, I'll try and uh, share some of the points regarding the DM scroll unfolding. I have no financial interest to disclose. Currently, among the endothelial keratoplasty techniques, DMEC is, the, is becoming the most popular among corneal surgeons. So when you are inserting the DMEC scroll, the ideal way is that we want to see that the open end of the scroll, what you see here with the arrow, should be facing towards the surgeon, so that once the tissue is inserted into the eye, the open end of the scroll should be facing upwards and not down towards the iris. This ensures that the orientation of the scroll is maintained so that the endothelial side is facing out and the, the stromal surface is facing towards the surgeon. One of the things uh, that happens when you insert the donor is that this is a fluid-based injection system. Uh, you inject the BSS, uh, along with that, what happens is your chamber tip increases, the intraocular pressure rises. If your donor scroll has not yet gone in and now you push your donor scroll into the eye. If you have a leaky wound, sometimes there can be a partial or total expulsion of the donor disc. To avoid this, we try to release fluid from the side port or we keep the eye or keep the anterior chamber shallow when we are putting the tip of the inserter into the eye. So once the donor scroll is injected into the eye, it can take any of these configurations. It can be a single scroll, simple fold, Going on. down. Be after this. I, I'm audible. Yes, you're audible. Yes, Rajesh, yes. please go ahead. Yeah, so all these different configurations it can have. So when so this is a nice website called patientready.org by Peter Wellman, where he has described uh, the techniques, videos, how to tackle each of these configurations. Now, typically, if you get a simple fold where you see the open end of the scroll is facing upwards. The tripen glue stain DM donor scroll, uh, you can open it by tapping using two candlers. You keep the chamber slightly shallow, secure the main wound, and then by creating these fluid waves, you can get the scroll to open up and you have the S or the F stamp that tells you the orientation of the scroll, whether it's in the right configuration or not. And then once it is centered, uh, well centered, you can inject an air bubble or a 20% SF6 for the tamponade. If you have like a, a taco fold, you can try and inject some fluid to get the taco fold to move, uh, to roll a bit so that again, this, the open end of the stroll is facing upwards. And here you can see that the technique that we are using is basically peripheral tapping. So you try to tap in the periphery as you press and let go the fluid wave that moves outwards, it kind of unfolds the DM scroll. So now you can see that I've got a partial unfold. I move it to the center with one candle. I'm going to pin down the open end of the scroll. And with the other one, when I tap in the periphery, you can see that the scroll opens up. Uh, you can even release fluid from a side port in that quadrant. As the fluid goes out, that can also help open up the scroll. So once you open up the scroll, you look for the stamp mark. Here you can see the F mark, which is in the right orientation. And then you can center it. And once it is well centered, you can go ahead, place an air bubble to secure the donor DM in place. It's always important that you watch where your candle is. If your candle is below the donor, it will turn blue. And here you can see that I'm trying to put another air bubble, but that air bubble has folded the graph. I take out the air bubble and so make sure that don't do a wound assisted air injection. Always put your candle below the DM scroll and then uh, unfold it. The other thing that you can do is the carpet unrolling or the December maneuver, where you hold one edge of the open end of the scroll and with the other candle, you tap, but on the inside of the scroll, not on the outside, and you can get the scroll to open up. And then you can see that you see the F stamp 
you tap a little bit just to get so that the visual axis is kind of covered quite well. You see that there is an inf API as well, which is there to prevent the pupillary block. If you have a vitrectomized eye or a highly myopic eye with a deep anterior chamber, sometimes it's a bit challenging to open up the stool because the chamber does not shallow. In that scenario, you can place a small air bubble on top of the scroll and use that air bubble to manipulate <coughs> and open up the scroll. And once the scroll is opened up, you gently aspirate the bubble so that the donor DM does not go back into a, a scroll configuration and then place an air bubble below to secure the graft. You can also do like what you have been doing in DSEC, you can do an endo in technique where the DM is manually, you trifold it, then take it into a, load it into a injector cartridge and using a micro forceps and AC maintainer to form the chamber, you can pull the graft into the eye. Here, the endothelium is on the inside, unlike the uh, normal uh, free floating DM where the endothelium is always facing on the outside. This is useful where you have shallow chambers or you have presence of AC IOL. That's the same patient you can see by day seven, the cornea looks pretty clear. This is another scenario where we are using the uh, pull through technique. So the DM is folded pretty much like a DSEC graph endoing and then using uh, AC maintainer to keep the chamber formed and using a micro forceps, the DM scroll is pulled into the eye. You don't let go of the DM scroll because the fluid movement from the AC maintainer can sometimes make the DM <laughs> donor DM uh, move around a bit in the anterior chamber. So I'm still holding on to the DM scroll. So I know that the orientation is maintained. And then using the other candle to tap, I get the DM scroll to open up. And once it has opened up, I can place an <coughs> air bubble below it. And I can, uh, and you can see the F stamp here that tells you that the DM scroll is in the right orientation. So that's the same patient. You can again you can see by day five, the cornea looks very clear, and the patient has six nine visual activity. Out of all this configuration, the double scroll configuration is the most ideal. So while we were doing our surgeries, we realized that uh, there is a maneuver whereby we can get the DM to scroll into a double scroll, which we published last year in cornea. So what you do basically is after you have aspirated the DM scroll into the wider part of the glass injector, you can agitate the fluid. You can basically pull the DM scroll into the narrow part and again, push it back into the wider part. So when you push it from the narrow to the wider part, what happens is the scroll opens up and then when it re-scrolls, it can go into a double scroll configuration. In about 20 eyes that we looked at, we found that this could be achieved in almost 85% of the eyes. In very older donors where the tissue is not very elastic, this may be a little bit difficult to achieve. And also on the converse side, if you have a very young donor where it forms a, like a cigar roll, it may be a little challenging to get the double scroll configuration. So the second thing that we wanted to know is how to prevent the tissue from trying to jump out of the eye. So we thought about doing a unidirectional flow. So we connect the AC main maintainer, get the flow on, inject the uh, insert the tip of the inserter into the eye. Then we rotate the tip so that the open, the open end of the DM scroll is facing upwards. Following which we ask the nurse to stop the flow in the ACM and also disconnect the anterior chamber maintainer to the, from the IV tubing. And you will see that now when you insert the DM scroll and you are removing the tip of your cartridge, there is no tendency for the scroll to jump out of the eye. And since the fluid leaks out from the AC maintainer, the chamber is also shallow. And this helps maintain the double scroll configuration. Once you have a double scroll configuration, the unfolding of the DM scroll is re reasonably simple, and you can do that pretty easily. Uh, as you see, in the, this is basically an unedited video showing the DM unscrolling in real time. So basically, you can uh, you can hold the graft on one side and the other side. Either you release fluid, or you can just do peripheral tapping, and that can open up the scroll. Following which, you can uh, place an air bubble below. And the overall time duration is less than, you know, about one, two, two to three minutes, you can get this scroll to open. And this, you can see that it's it's quite repeatable. And this is what I do here. I don't have a double scroll. It's a single scroll. We look at the open end of the scroll. 
And as we insert it into the eye, you can see that as you are withdrawing, there is no tendency for the scroll to jump out of the eye. And then you can tap on the center to get the scroll to open up on one side. And once it is open on one side, you can just press to secure that. And then this is the data summer maneuver. And your scroll opens up and well centered, you can go below and place an air bubble to secure the graph. <coughs> and this is fairly reproducible that we have seen. So you the the what the game changer has been is the marking using the S or the F stamp through a stromal window, or you can make this triangle or notch in the periphery where the notch or the arrowhead is going in a clockwise direction, or you can put asymmetric one and two marks, which again, when you join them, they go in a clockwise direction. So these are ways and means whereby it makes life easier for the DMX surgeon and not have sleepless night thinking that I have put the graph upside down. And the other thing that we do nowadays, we prefer to do is to use an air bubble over the fold of DM to, to mark rather than making that three millimeter stromal punch. So you can see that we have partially uh, stripped the DM after which we use a 30 gauge cannula and place a air bubble within the fold of DM. We dry off a little bit of the excess fluid and then you can use your Sinsky hook and you can create your F stamp very easily on this folded DM. So what happens is the rest of the stromal tissue is intact and if you wanted to use the rest of the stroma for a doubt, it can easily be used. Other ways of identifying orientation is to use a handheld slit lamp or the best way is to have intra-op OCT where in real time you can see the orientation of the DM scroll. So these are in short the tips and tricks that can help you uh, perform a DMX surgery much more easily. And, and I think uh, as a surgeon goes on, with the surgery, every every individual surgery is a learning experience. And I think you should watch videos looking at all different configurations because uh, it's not necessary that always you will have only uh, one type of configuration when you insert your donor into the eye. But if you know all the different tips and tricks, uh, it will be nice uh, to atraumatically unfold the graph and minimize the endothelial cell loss in DMAC surgery. That was an amazing talk, Dr. Rajesh. Amazing. So simple, you made it all appear. Dr. Rajesh, would you want to add anything else? I doubt whether there was anything left unsaid. Would you add, like to add anything on this? Uh, you mean me? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, it's a very uh, wrong time that you have asked me, Dr. Chitra, to add something because, you know, mm -hmm. we added once Dr. Pogla has spoken about uh, DMIC procedure. So, uh, I was just spellbound and I was watching his videos. That was fantastic. Rajesh, one thing I can ask you that uh, yeah. with, uh, with intra-op OCT, where you have access to uh, that, uh, uh, how easy it becomes to uh, identify uh, if the scroll is, uh, especially when it's you're not sure about uh, the stamping or it, uh, the scroll is not clearly visible. Uh, how often uh -huh. do you prefer uh, to keep uh, the OCT on or you continuously keep it on? <coughs> practically yeah, actually, intraoperative OCT definitely helps us to know which way is the scroll. And that is also particularly helpful when you have a slightly more edematous cornea, a little hazy cornea. In such a case, uh, it is really helpful. Most of the times, the stamping uh, is quite uh, effective and it helps. But uh, uh, sometimes the stamp is not that clear, it's not that uh, prominent. In such cases, intraoperative OCT is really useful to exactly know which way the curl is. So, I mean, it, it is helpful. It, I mean, it has an additive value, particularly in slightly hazy corn. Sure. Thank you. Dr. Basak, uh, which are the donor, which are like a sort of red mark for you or red flag for you that... Uh, any particular age, any particular disease, any particular uh, pair of donor, what, what makes you think that, you know what, this is not the most ideal donor which I would select? So uh, for ideally, the learner should start with the tissue of age between 55 to 65 or 70 that way. And uh, for donor preparation, also non-diabetic, <laughs> severely diabetic, renal failure patient, Recently, I had a 
experience, but not that which are, which are reported because uh, uh, you will learn the trick how will you rescue those small, small tear. But initially, you should avoid those tissue for donor preparation. For unfolding, when you learn the technique, you can, the best tissue is between 55 to 60, but I have used the a series of patients more than 80 years and I am still using it. Those are basically flat DM. There is no scroll formation. Sometimes you are surprised that I have video. It takes only 10 seconds to, you see that whole DM is open and it is in right direction, 10 seconds. So, but sometimes it may be reversed, but you can always flip it. Uh, the I usually, my preference, if the cornea is hazy or you find difficulty in like deep uh, anterior chamber, high myopcase, I try to pick up older donor because I know that unscrolling in this group of patient is difficult because there is always a tendency to reform the IC, especially with vitrectomized eyes. You open it, you come out, and again, it's the deep end and your scroll is again reforming. In this group of patient, if you use little older donor, say 70, 75, something like that, then the uh, DM, it is not a scroll, it is a flat type of a half scroll or uh, one fourth scroll, something like that. Then you can easily uh, unscroll it total flat. And once the orientation is right, you I, I find those are uh, easy. And regarding younger donor, you can, I mean, prepare the graft. I have prepared lowest stage is 27, but unfolding is really a, an issue. And donor preparation is also an issue. But by and large, between 45 to up to 90, if your cell is good and morphology is all right, you can always use those tissue. One question to Sunita. Uh, Sunita, which are the cases where uh, you would be careful in uh, terms when you take them up for the uh, surgery? Which are uh, those cases where uh, you may find that uh, there can be fibrin inside or there can be things which you sort of uh, preempt that as a beginner, we can avoid such kind of cases, which are the not so ideal cases, which uh, we should be avoiding in the beginning. I think uh, pre-operative planning wise, uh, one should really look at uh, what is the status of the IOL iris uh, you know, stability. And quite often majority of our cases like fuchs are because the primary indications will be a good indication. But uh, those cases which have had a PBK and where the iris is distorted, pupil does not dilate, those are the cases which are bound to even have vitreous in the anterior chamber in the course of management. So those are cases and diabetic patients, sometimes you can just reckon that their iris is very, very different. Uh, particularly if it's a combined surgery, sometimes the pupils don't dilate. These are some cases which I would say where uh, you can have uh, these kind of eventualities where you deal with fibrin, vitreous in the AC, which makes little unfolding little challenging. Can I just add one thing? Uh, please, please, Rajesh. Uh, actually, uh, in a couple of cases, what we have found out that while doing PI, the PI there was some bleed. And then in that case, uh, I guess we need to put air and wait for a longer period so that the bleed stops completely. Otherwise, if there's any blood left, then uh, it really causes that fibrinous strands. And uh, many times uh, it is a major reason for detaching the lenticule. Dr. Fogla, one last question to you. Is there any uh, any effect of uh, storage, uh, duration of storage of uh, the tissue uh, on uh, the way it uh, behaves, the way it unfolds, or the way it uh, peels from the surface? So, uh, older tissue, I mean, the, the, the duration of storage I'm talking about. I have not found uh, the duration of storage to affect the donor preparation I think uh, it's more like <coughs> the older age can be more friable. You know, sometimes you have tissues that tend to pinch off in the periphery when you're trying to peel. And like Dr. Vasak said that some of these diabetics, uh, they have abnormal adhesion. So if you start peeling from the periphery and you feel that it's not going the right way, 
instead of damaging the entire tissue, maybe think of doing a rescue by doing a resect using the same tissue, you know, rather than going all around and getting tears everywhere. Exactly. Because you, you, you can make it out right in the beginning. It will start just peeling from the periphery about 20% and then you find that you get this horseshoe tears and there are these, like, I usually, when I peel, I don't hold the sclera. I don't hold the rim. I just leave the tissue in the punch and I'm just peeling with one force. That ensures that I don't have too much of pressure when I'm trying to peel. Is your vacuum mm -hmm. on that time? No, the vacuum is not on. I just ensure that there's no fluid under the cornea. So the tissue doesn't slide. So that gives me optimal idea as you're peeling. If your tissue starts moving a lot, that means there is abnormal addition. If you keep holding with your left hand the tissue, obviously the amount of pressure that you're going to apply will be significantly more. And one thing I want to add that we are using a lot of MK medium preserved tissue. So it is 50-50 like. So uh, uh, both are good. There is nothing wrong with MK medium because we are using on day three on those mm -hmm. corneas. So we can check all the quality check has been done. Nothing is. So we use MK medium preserved tissue. And by feeling, by feeling, and we have also, though not statistically significant, we have compared the data of both MK medium and non uh, cornisol preserve. Uh, MK medium preserve tissue, the peeling is easier feeling. I'll agree I'm, on that. I think it's uh, just because. Easier you... feeling. Easier feeling that I feel that it is easy. And time wise, <coughs> less than cornisol, not statistically significant. Thank you. I, I think uh, we can Just keep on, on talking to you all and there's no... Yeah, please, Rajesh. Yeah, please. Please. Cornisol, cornisol, you need to wash it off because it's a little slimy. So you don't slimy, slimy. Cornisol, yes. What happens is sometimes you find that even to hold the tissue and peel. So if you just wash off the donor storage medium, then it becomes a little bit easier. But like you mentioned, MK medium tissues are a little thicker, swollen. So that's why maybe you feel that the peeling is a little easier compared to cornisol. Thank you, Dr. Rajesh. Please stay connected. We need to learn a lot from you to, during the course of this.